Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com coming to you today from the shores of the mighty River Nile in order to bring you episode number 13 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to make Arduino and Python work together. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong glass of iced coffee. That is straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn more about parametric design and parametric modeling. And you got a little glimpse of that in the last uh, lesson where we were modeling that LED. We were creating a 3D model of that LED. And as you were watching me do that, you saw that I extensively used parameters and parametric design but you just sort of watch me do it. Today I want to talk a little bit more specifically about what parametric design is and why it is important to use uh, Use it and then I'll give you a couple of simple examples. Okay, so first of all, what is parametric design? Well, that is where whether we're talking about a CAD program like AutoCAD or Fusion 360 or we're talking about a programming language like Visual Python where we're creating a 3D visualization or a 3D simulation of an object. In either case, you want to use parameters instead of constants. Now, how does that work? Well, that would be something like, let's say that you are going to create a box. All right, you're going to create that box. Well, in VPython, you would say my box is equal to box, and then you would need to say like how long it is, how wide it is, how tall it is. You would need to say what color it is. And so you end up with this huge long line of code that has all of these numbers in it. And as you're typing them in, they sort of make sense. But maybe that program would have 40 or 50 different objects objects that you create in it. And then if you want to adjust something, it gets really confusing because you got to look through all your code and you got to try to figure out what line of code goes with the object that you're trying to edit. And then the other thing that you got to do is, is that you got to go across that line of code and say, now, which was the height and which was the width? I can't remember what I called what, what. And so it just gets really, really confusing. With parametric design, what you're using is you're defining variables and then you use those variables in the commands that create the object. So up at the top, using parametric design, I would just say that the box, you know, uh, the box length is equal to something, the box width is equal to something, and the box height is equal to something up at the top. And then in the lines of code where we're working with that box, we just put in the parameters, box width, box height, box length. Now, if you need to adjust that object later on, you go up to your parameters at the top and you just change the dimensions. And then everything down in the program just logically works because it was written not in terms of numbers or constants. It was written in terms of those parameters that you defined at the top of the program. Okay, so that is what parametric design is. It's the use of variables as much as possible when you're coding or defining things in a, a, a CAD program. All right, so the first important point is do it do parametric design. The second point is understand what it is. It's using variables instead of constants. The third concept that I would tell you is, is that you want to, as much as possible, to use as few of parameters as you can. So you don't make a parameter for every little thing. You try to be logical in the way that you define your parameters. So let's just say that we were going to have a house, okay? Well, you have a bunch of different walls in the house, but you don't need to have like wall one thickness, wall two thickness, wall three thickness. You could make one parameter, which was just wall thickness, because likely all of your walls would be the same. But you say, well, what about, what about? Well, if it's that case, then make a separate parameter if you need it. 
but only make the separate parameter if you need it. So like, let me give you an example. Let's say that you might say, well, the outside walls are going to be different. Okay, we'll make two parameters. Outside wall equals eight inches. Inside wall is equal to six inches. And then you design all your walls as either an outside wall or an inside wall. Does that make sense? So number one, use parameters. Number two, it's use of variables instead of constants in your lines of code or creating objects in, 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 in CAD. Number three, use as few of parameters as possible. And number four, when possible, make one parameter dependent on another parameter where every parameter is not just completely independent, that certain things are going to depend on other things. So let's just say, for example, you were going to make a little box, like just a little plastic box, and you were going to 3D print it. Well, if the box is very small, probably you want the walls very thin. And as the box gets bigger and bigger, you probably want the walls to get thicker and thicker and thicker. And so if you had a little box that was an inch on a side, you probably would not want the wall thickness to be, you know, a half an inch. You wouldn't want it to be, you know, more like an eighth or a 32nd or a 16th of an inch. OK, but then if you made the box bigger, like six inches by six inches by six inches, maybe you would want the walls to be like a quarter inch. Well, what you can see is the wall thickness is going to depend on the dimension of the box. So I might just do something like my box thickness or my wall thickness in the in, in the box. I might make it like the length of the box divided by 10 or the length of the box divided by eight. And so as the box gets bigger and bigger, then the walls naturally scale up as well. And that way you have a parameterized model and you could come in on your box and you just could just do something as simple as length, width, and height. And then everything adjusts so that the box that you printed based on changing the side all still makes sense. So I hope that makes sense. We want to make one parameter dependent on another parameter anytime it's possible. And the final thing that I want to tell you is, is that, yeah, you want to use this, you want to make everything a parameter. You want to use as few of parameters as possible. You want to make some parameters where it makes sense, logical sense to make them dependent on other parameters. And then the final thing is don't over constrain your model. And so let me see if I can kind of show you this. And man, if you guys can learn this, your life is going to be so much easier, both on the homework that I'm going to give you today, both on the homework that I'm going to give you today, your life is going to be easier. Plus, when we get into Fusion 360 and start doing CAD work, you're just going to be a champion and you're really, really going to love this stuff. So I'm going to come over here and uh, this sketch pad is not a CAD program, so I'm just going to kind of be drawing freehanded here. But let's just say something. And what I'm talking about now, again, is using parameters and not over constraining your model. So let's say I wanted to make a cylindrical tube. OK, and so I would have a circle. OK, and that circle would have, let's say that I called that inside circle and big R for radius. And let's say I make that a one. OK, now I'm going to come. And since this is a cylinder, I'm going to need another circle. OK, and that's also going to have a radius. And that is going to be outside, outside circle radius. And that's going to be equal to 1.5. All right. And so I could come in, I could change these parameters later. Well, also, I have this dimension here that I'll just call T for thickness. And so then I'm going to say now T is equal to 0.5. So I've got here 1, 1 1.5, and then 0.5. All right. Now, what is the problem? I have over constrained this problem. So if I went in into Python and I said, I'll just abbreviate. If I went into Python and I said inside circle radius is equal to one, outside circle radius is equal to 1.5, 
and the thickness is equal to 0.5, what have I done? I have over constrained this problem. And now if I came in and wanted to make the outside diameter bigger, so I take this and instead of, or the inside diameter bigger, uh, instead of making this one, I make it 1.25. I've now broken the model because uh, I've broken the model because this wall thickness would no longer be 0.5. Do you see what I'm saying? That now I created a non-physical object. So what would make more sense? We want to use parameters, but I would say what would make more sense would be ICR. Let's go back and say it's 1.5. And outside circle radius is equal to, ah, I messed up. Let me erase that. The inside circle radius we had at 1. And the outside circle radius we had at 1.5. And now I do need a parameter t, but what would I say that that is? That is OCR minus ICR. Now what happens? Now if I go in and I make the outside dimension different because I want to tweak my design, or if I make the inside dimension different because I want to tweak my design, the model doesn't break because the, the thickness, the T, automatically adjust in order to accommodate the, uh, in order to accommodate uh, the other things that you've changed. All right, now I would show you maybe even a better way that I would do this. Like I would try to do something like this. I would try to say that my, in, I would maybe start with my outside circle radius and I'm gonna make that 1.5. My outside circle radius is 1.5. Now I would make my inside circle radius, I would say, well, I'm always gonna to wanna to know that the bigger that pipe is, the bigger that cylinder is, the heavier that outside ring is going to be. And so I'm gonna make it like 0.8 times OCR. Now what would I do with T, the thickness? The thickness would be the outside circle radius minus the inside circle radius. Okay, what happens now? I've got this tube and I can change one parameter and the model then just works. Well, I might also have one more that I would set and I would say the height. Let's say I want it five inches long. All right, now for me to play with this model and resize it, I can do it simply by telling it the OCR and the height and everything else is gonna work, all right? Now you might say, you might come in and you might say, oh, well, wait a minute, if it's getting higher then I wanna do this, okay. Well, adjust it to how you think it should be, but always be looking for the opportunity to have dependent parameters Per dependent parameters that depend on the independent parameters. So what for this case would be the independent parameters? It would be like I would say the outside circle radius and the height. And then all the other parameters would be adjusted in terms of those two. Does that make sense? So it's a very, very important concept. You wanna use the minimum number of parameters that you can you want to not over constrain by saying, like defining the inside, the outside, and the thickness, that's over constraining, but define things such that as many parameters as possible depend on a small number of independent parameters. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. And guys, I didn't want to do any coding today because I just wanted to give you the homework. I wanted to kind of tell you again how to do the uh, how to do the parametric mod, uh, the parametric design, the parametric modeling. But now what I want to do is I want to give you the homework, and I want you to go off and do this homework using parametric design. Okay, and what is the key? As few of parameters as possible where some parameters depend on other parameters, okay? So let me uh, let me see if I can switch over here. Let me see if I can switch over here and show you what I want you to do for this homework. And it's not just that you do this, but you do this using good parametric design. And so I need to see exactly where that uh, 
where that view is. I'm kind of, let's see, I've lost my window a little bit here. Okay, I think this might, I think this might do it. Okay, so this is what I've done. I've got a little bit of a mess there, don't I? Let me adjust this view back. That just bugs me too much. I should have done this before we started the lesson, but let me go ahead and see if I can uh, get this. Okay, and what I can go ahead and do is I can tell you what we're working towards. Uh, we're working towards here making uh, a game. Okay. That's where we're going with this. We're making a game. And in fact, if you see, I've got a joystick hooked up to the Arduino. But before we can make the game, we've got to kind of design our space. Okay. And that's what I've done here. And what the assignment is, is using parametric design in vPython to design this room. Okay. You got a room. And then in the middle of the room, you've got a marble. Now, for this first assignment, you don't have to make the marble move, okay? But in the next lesson, I will show you how I use parametric design to design the room. And then I will also show you in the next lesson how to make the ball move around. But if you're new to vPython, don't worry about the ball. I'll show you how to do that next week. And then what you can imagine is what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a game. And then on the Arduino side, we're going to have this controller. We're going to have this, uh, this joystick in order to play the game. All right. But that's more than what I can do in one lesson. And so we're going to start kind of building up our vPython model and then we'll come in and we'll bring the vPython model to life using uh, using the joystick. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope it does. Guys, I kind of feel bad just doing a lesson where I just talk and don't do any coding, but just the thing I know is I know how important it is to understand this concept of parametric design. And used to when I worked with uh, live students in the classroom, the biggest problem I would see is they would start building their models and they might have 50 or 60 different objects that made up their visual or their model. And then they would need to adjust something like, oh, I've got to leave more room here. And then everything would break and they would have to go back and then they couldn't remember this line of code, what object did that go with? And it would just be, it, finally they get just frustrated and just throw their hands up. But if you're using parametric design, you just go up to the pop, top and like for this, what do you have? Well, I got a box width, box height, box length. I got a marble radius in a marble position. You see, it's just like real, real simple. And then if we want to make this, if we want to change our gameplay, if we want to change the size of the box, it's just real simple because up at the top, I've got a small number of, of variables that I can just change the value of and boom, we are there. Okay, guys, I hope you don't mind that I took a little time to talk about this because I really, really think it's important. And it's kind of weighing heavily on my mind because I'm actually going in and starting to design those uh, Fusion 360 lessons, those CAD lessons that we're going to be doing in the next class. And I think and I hope a lot of you guys in this class will be taking that class. We're going to be learning Fusion 360, learning how to do 3D design. We're going to set up a 3D printer and then you'll be able to print your designs on your 3D printer. And so that's coming up. And so if you get good at parametric design, you're going to have a lot of fun in that class. Okay, guys. Hey, we got a fisherman up there. I know you guys always feel cheated if you don't uh, if you don't have a fisherman in the view, but uh, you can see he's out there. Oh, he looks like he's throwing water. He's bailing water out of his uh, out of his boat there. But uh, that's going to be your assignment for next week is to go in and design the room using parameters. I'll give you my solution next week. Then we're going to really start moving that ball around and then we're going to bring the th whole thing live with the Arduino and with the, uh, with the joystick. All right, guys, I hope that you guys are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. I am really, really having a lot of fun with this and I hope you're enjoying it too. If you're enjoying it, give us a thumbs up and also leave a comment down below because when you leave a comment, when you leave a thumbs up, it helps me with the old YouTube juice and YouTube will then show this to more people and hopefully we'll have more people coding because the world needs more people writing programs and doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. 
This is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com coming to you from the mighty River Nile. I will talk to you guys later.